The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 909 Eyes on the Future Valet and Amber crashed for the door of generosity too, briefly getting stuck against each other as they struggled to be the first inside. Valet won, and they both tumbled through, landing on their backs and panting. Had a good run, darlings. Felicity raised an eyebrow, laying regally on the couch, as the last hint of pink, indicating where the sun had set, vanished from the horizon. Valet shrugged, staring at the ceiling. Hey, it was productive. Yeah, Amber gasped for breath, stopping to sniff when she realized how the place smelled. Iron flanks, what's cooking? Maple stepped out from the kitchenette, sighing in resignation at the nickname. Well, I don't know. We're well stocked, but a lot of the spices and ingredients are things I've never even seen before. So I'm experimenting a little, and I think it will be good, but prepare to be surprised. Valet licked her dry lips. So snazzy. Any clue when it'll be done? Maple winked. Sooner than you think. Within minutes, the group was crowded around a small living room coffee table, clearly designed for a party far smaller than they were. Felicity kept the couch, sharing space with Maple, and letting jam jars and starlights sit on the floor in the gap between it and the table, and Valet sat on the opposite side with Amber and Shinespark at her sides, and Nyala taking the less crowded end. Well... Here we are, Maple said, touching her foreheads together and looking over the meal, a collection of fruit that were baked and seasoned and stuffed with something tropical that nobody recognized. It's been a while since we've been able to do this, hasn't it? Shinesburg nodded subtly. I'm glad we don't have to ration anymore. And I'm glad that you're back, Amber added, squeezing Valet's shoulder. Felicity cleared her throat. I must admit, I can't remember the last time I dined with this large of a group without any sort of pretense. Even back in the Empire, there was always some ulterior motive. We tried to do this on the ship, Niala pointed out. On the way here? To raise spirits, Shinepark said. That was for the sake of denial. What everyone's currently in denial of, Jamjars interrupted, is how we only have one band, which clearly means we won't get rooms to ourselves. Valet gave her an irritated look. Do you mind? We're trying to have a moment here. And it's a very large bed, Felicity insisted. I, for one, wouldn't be averse to coming up with a mutually beneficial agreement that could solve this problem with added bonuses. Shinesburg looked at Valet, waiting for her reaction. Valet grinned and shrugged. Hey, you know my opinion, the more the merrier. But are you girls really all down for sharing the bed? Amber and Felicity predictably nodded, indicating they had no problems. Maple bit her lip. Well, the only reason I wouldn't is because of my injuries, but I think they're healed enough that as long as no one accidentally lays on me... And I'm fine, Shinesburg added. But I blinked at her. Wait, really? I never thought you were much of a... You know... Felicity and Shinespark glanced at each other. We talked, Shinespark said. I have no reason not to join you. Well, I do, Niala apologized. It's already roasting in here, and I think you're all going to bake alive. I'll take the roof, though. The fillies can have the couch. Jamjar surveyed the room, looking deeply ponderous. Sure, I'll take the couch. Starlight, you want to share the couch? Starlight blinked at her, then glanced at Maple and the others. No? Killjoys, Jamjars pouted. You know what, Amber interrupted. I would much rather talk about what we're going to do tomorrow because I'm new around here and I need plans. Who has the scoop on what's cool to do? Felicity instantly perked up. Bathhouse! We need to investigate that purported bathhouse, darling. Nah, Amber shrugged. Gotta get dirty before that's as much fun. Let's do that in the evening. Stuff your face, Valley suggested. You and Sparky especially are bone bags. Now that we got the boat and all our money here, we can see what there is to eat in College Town. Hey, Sparky, want to go hang out with me in College Town tomorrow? Shinespark shrugged. Okay. Amber raised an eyebrow at Felicity. Think you'll be up for a hike in the name of fine dining? Felicity glanced down at herself. Ooh, I'm 
sure I could persuade this old body to do that, and I'm hardly flooded in pressing endeavors myself. Amber, you should go play with some of the locals, Maple suggested. Starlet and I went and watched them play their games for a while, and it seems exactly like your thing. Watch out, though, Valet nodded. They get real into their sports. Don't sign any contracts or make any promises. Just take names and have a blast. Who knows? Maybe I'll join you. I wonder how those friends of ours from the ship are doing, Felicity added. Probably busy spending time around Gerardo and Slipstream, I imagine. How Birdo's doing okay, Amber nodded. From what I've heard, it sounds like this place should be his jam. Bananas, you wouldn't even believe it. The lady stretched her forelegs and belched. If attention was food, that griffin could survive on it alone. I hope Slipstream isn't the jealous type because a showboating goof like him could lift one talon and have an instant harem here. Amber gave Valet a nudge, and I doubt he's the only one. Yep, I'm real popular with the students. Valet took another bite, devouring one of the stuffed fruits whole. No, <laughs> don't worry though. Those kids are clueless, and I'm not gonna string them along so far that they get hurt. Pretty clueless, Shunpuck agreed. I don't have any plans for tomorrow. A black hoof landed around her shoulders. You and I, Valet declared, are gonna hang out. We are going to rock the sunbathing scene and revel in doing nothing. How's that? Tomorrow's a weekday, Jam Joyce pointed out. All the students will be stuck inside with their classes. Try not to make them too jealous. Yeah, you'd be absolutely mortified if I did that, Valet winked at Amber. It's the ultimate contest. See how long you can survive outside without getting a bloody nose from the view, and then see how many classes you can ruin by doing the same to the students by existing just outside the window. Maple coughed, fondly yet sternly. All right, you two. I've been considering trying to send myself tomorrow, and I'd be doing it to enjoy the weather, not to get looks. And there's probably a lot of other mares on this island who do the same. Lovely, pursed her lips. Yeah, fair. That's why you only mess with the ones that take the bait or start something first. But you're just gonna lay around, though. Hmm, Maple mused. I might go for a walk. I wish there were trees here. Being outside doesn't feel quite the same without them, but I could still use the fresh air, even if it smells like salt instead of forest. And I'll probably watch the sports fields, and maybe I'll look in some of the classrooms. You never know if a professor might be teaching something interesting and let you listen. And what about you two? Felicity glanced down to Starlight and Gem Jars. I imagine there has to be at least half a plan between the two of you. I have things to do and places to be, Jam Jars nodded sincerely. Starlet shrugged. I don't have anything important. I'll go with one of you. I just don't want to be on my own. I've got it. Valet suddenly blinked, glancing between Starlet and Shrinespark. Bananas, I know exactly what we're gonna do. Hey, Sparky, you ever wanted to fly on your own again? Shrinespark stared at her. What do you ask? Because, Valet grinned, I've got a science friend who would do anything for my cooperation in studying how this cutie mark works. She patted her flank. And she also has this huge machine room she mentioned being a gravity manipulator. What do you want about it lets ponies float around in zero gravity? I bet she'd let us play with it in exchange for my help. Shrinsberg stared. Why me, though? Starlet asked. Easy, Valet shrugged. While we were investigating the Winnego Hearts and trying to figure out how to safely seal them, we noticed my cutie mark does really weird things to their readings. And weren't we thinking your new cutie mark is one of the potential culprits for your magic being all... You know... Starlight mutely nodded. Point is, you have an artifice, I have an artifice. If they can figure something out about mine, maybe they can find a way to improve your quality of life, or at least know more about it. Take it over! Starlight opened her mouth for a moment. Okay, she eventually decided. I'll come along. But could we talk about something first? 
Yeah, sure, why not? Valet leaned on Scheinspark and tried to make herself comfortable, the other mayor not expecting the gesture and nearly falling over. Bananas! Valet scrambled not to fall too. Whoops, sorry, but hey, I've got all the time in the world! Speaking of time, Felicity murmured, looking at the empty table and licking her lips, I think it might be time for some beauty sleep for this mare. Yay for going to sleep in the evening, Amber pumped a huff. Instead of staying up all night because you're antsy and nervous and don't know what tomorrow will hold, yay! I'll cheer to that. Valet stood up, flicking Scheinspark's cheek with her tail. Honestly, who even knows what we'll do tomorrow? Who even knows what we'll do tomorrow any day, Maple pointed out. Funny how it's the days where we know what we're going to do. Staying in our rooms all day with nothing we can do when we're afraid of that the most. Here's to a good tomorrow, everyone. Yeah! Felicity hoisted herself to her hooves as well, rubbing her belly. Marvelous cuisine! Now, with that out of the way, I call the bottom of the heap, and I trust you all will act as my blankets. Amber stuck out her tongue, following Felicity to the bedroom. Oh, we'll see about that! Shinespark followed wordlessly, and once Niala stepped out the door, bidding everyone else good night, Maple did as well. Soon, only jam jars and starlight were still in the living room. So, jam jars gave her a look. What are we going to do? I heard you stayed with some of the school ponies the last few nights. If you really want it, we could wait until everyone here is asleep and then just use this room. But if you're already a hot shot with the others, I bet we could get them to give us starlight yawn, heading for the bedroom and leaving jam jars alone. No thanks. I'm happy to stay with Maple and the others. It doesn't look like anyone wants the couch, if you want to sleep on your own. Uh, Jam Jars gave her a frustrated look, but did nothing as Starlight followed her friends into the bedroom and climbed in, readying herself for sleep. Starlight awoke in a cold sweat, her heart beating rapidly. Something was wrong. She panicked, trying to move, but she was pinned by something big and warm, and there was a voice of warning whispering urgently in her ear. Starlight, let's go! A hoof poked her hard. Starlight fought back the urge to use her horn and teleport, mentally clubbing herself with the knowledge that she was on edge, and that would make things worse. What? She sleepily breathed. I've been watching the streets for two hours and they don't have guard rotations here. No one will catch us and we can go wherever we want. Now come on! Starlight forced her eyes closed, hoping a few extra seconds of faint sleep would let them open properly. Jam jars? She croaked, the possibility crossing her mind that this was a false alarm. Shh! Jam jars shushed her, and Starlight realized that Philly's face was inches from her own. Come on, she urged. Do you really just want to lay here when we could be out being proactive? Proactive about what? Starlight crumbled, someone's hoof shoving her in their sleep as they grew tired of her squirming. Everything? Hello! We're new on this island and have to scope out who's in charge, who's dangerous, and how we're going to don't care. Starlight closed her eyes again, not that she could see much less with how dark the room was. I'd rather sleep. After a few moments of silence, Jamjar sighed and slunk away. And that was the end of that. Starlight's heart had slowed from when she woke with a fright. She knew sleep hadn't been chased far off. She would probably be back asleep in a minute, tops. It seemed, even here at Kinmari, she couldn't get a restful night without being woken by some emergency or other. But... That had been Jam Jars. Was Jam Jars really the worst thing she had to deal with? It was comforting, almost as comforting as her friends who were all close enough to stay together like this, even when they could have pressed for space of their own. Felicity was beneath her, acting as a full-body pillow. She could tell because only Felicity had that shape of a frame. A leg was on top of her, and two others were draped against her side. Starlight breathed deeply, 
her nose, surrounded by fur. Nothing was waiting around the corner to get them. Maybe she could wake up tomorrow, and everything would be all right. In a different universe, were she to reach this night with different experiences behind her and happier memories on her shoulders, Starlight almost could have smiled. End of chapter 909